two of them. And we try and see who can get to 24 using the numbers here. Uh, I'm going to start by going 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus 1. I get to 21, which is not the correct answer. But can anyone get closer? Uh, and then, yeah, in the chat stream, let's uh, let's see how everyone's doing. I see a lot of students are still joining, so we'll give you a bit more time. And for our students who are in already, I want to see who is going to get the question right for the Mass 24. To who does the glory belong for the victory of A or the victory of B? Uh, Sarah has said seven plus one is eight. Eight minus five is three. Three times eight is 24. Sarah, I believe you have got question one done and dusted. Let's just check. Seven plus one. So seven plus one is eight. Minus five is three. So you've used up seven one and five, and then you took that three and you multiplied it by eight. Sarah, you are the winner for A. Susanna has been defeated for the first time in a while. <laughs> um, don't worry, Susanna, hang in there. Uh, who can do the second one? Okay. Who can do the second one, which is B, and you've got the numbers five, four, three, and three to play with. Okay, I see people are still coming in, which is great. Indeed, if, are there any newbies tonight? If there are any newbies, if you could just give us a thumbs up, just so we know how many newbies are in the group. You are most welcome to our learning space. Oh, I see about, oh, quite a few new people. Okay, welcome guys. It's really great to have you here. We always start the lesson with a bit of a warm-up. We, and we do this warm-up called Maths 24. It's like a little game we play. Nolotando says three divided by three is one. Five plus one is six. Oh, I think you've got this. So three. Okay, so what was happening here was we go three divided by three is one. And that's used two numbers. Then I go one plus five is six. So I've used the five. And six times four is 24. It looks to me like you have claimed the victory, Nolotando. So very well done to you. And I think there are a couple of other answers that are coming through here. Come Five plus four is nine. Nine times three is 27. You're also correct. So come Valetu's way is actually different. There's more than one way to do this. Five plus four is nine. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 minus 3 is 24. So you get the silver medal, Kambaletu. Well done. Um, cool. Okay, guys, let's get cracker lacking in terms of the lesson. So I just want to start with some admin announcements, and I'm going to ask Miss Anya. Miss Anya, for those who are new, yes. is the other math teacher who is helping me, and she monitors the chat and so I'm going to go to her for some announcements. Right, hello everyone and a special warm welcome to all our new students that are joining us tonight or who might have joined in the last week or so. Um, so let's introduce me, my name, my name is Anya or Miss A or Ma'am, I really don't mind, I go by many names. Um, just three important things, so we have lessons on Mondays and Wednesdays from um, 6 till 7. Wednesdays we do our fun quizzes, so at the end of a Wednesday lesson, keep your eye on the chat, I tend to send the link to the, or to the quiz in the chat, you can access it from here, and then I think a very important thing is if you are a new student, um, a new student or so, I'm going to mention that point down also, if you're a new student or so and you're struggling with the content we are doing this week, or you joined it last week and you're still finding it a bit difficult, 
all our lessons are recorded. So this lesson that's being recorded now at the moment will probably be on the site by Wednesday or so. So please make a point of it tonight or during the week to go on the Watobi site and go watch our previous recordings. And then just the one, the third point that so wrote down, next week, Monday is a public holiday. So there will not be classes next week, Monday, but there will be classes this Class week, Sunday. Wednesday. Okay, and then just on that note now, please ask that we keep our microphones muted. If you want to share something, please raise your hand or share your question in the chat. Um, I think that's enough from me, sir, to you. Perfect. Yeah. So, guys, what we do is um, the chat is often the quickest way to get an answer. Uh, and Miss Anya will often reply to you very, very quickly. However, at times it is nice to have some voices. And then if you want to have a question, you just raise your hand and then Miss Anya will say, okay, um, Lutando, you can speak or, or whatever it, it may be. Uh, I think we've done most of the, the admin. The important thing is that this is actually the ninth lesson out of 10 on circle geometry. So just if you are feeling it, we're going to do a little bit of revision at the beginning to consolidate from all we've been doing. But if you feel a little bit lost today, if it's your first lesson, that would be totally understandable because of the fact that, you know, we've had about eight, you know, quite a lot before this. Um, but I hope that you can get something out of the whole process regardless. Okay, let's start with a bit of a recap. I, over the last couple of weeks, we have been learning a whole bunch of facts or what we might call theorems about circles. So if we are given, the way the theorems go are that if you're given a certain situation with certain amount of information, so here's a circle and I have the center of a circle and I have a, what's called a chord in the circle. And now I have a line that goes from the center of the circle perpendicular to the chord. So this is still a situation. I'm going to give these vertices a label o a and b now what we've been learning is that when we see a situation like this we know something about this we know something extra that the drawing is not showing who can tell me in the chat what do i know is true that's not shown on the drawing that we've learned about in previous weeks when we have a line from the center perpendicular to a chord, what does that do? In fact, I'll even give you an extra point. We'll call this C over here. So I want to know what fact have we learned that if we've got a line coming from the center perpendicular to a chord, it's not a tangent. So we're focusing on this chord up to here. What do we know? There was a previous lesson thing okay ac is equal to cb yes what we know is that this line cuts the chord in half or we might say ac equals cb now have a look at the drawing basically this is the fact that a, a line from the center perpendicular to a chord cuts it in half and the reason we use or the shorthand is line perpendicular line from center or line perpendicular to chord is the shorthand reason that we use. So I just want to spend a moment or two doing a couple of little revision things to get our brains getting over the, the circle facts. So that was the first one. The second one looks very, very much the same, but it's not the same. So in this one, I'm given a, a chord and the line from the center goes to the midpoint of the chord. In this situation, what do we know that's not showing in the drawing? So we have a line from the center that goes to the midpoint of a chord. What do we know about this that the drawing is not showing? I would like you to answer in the chat. Okay, you, you're given the fact that the, that not quite. AB is equal to BC is given. What else do we know? If there's a line from the center to the midpoint of a chord, you could construct radii. So the main thing I wanted to show you here is that a line from the center to a midpoint of a chord is going to be perpendicular or at 90 degrees. Come Valetio, you're on the money. So 
what you would know in this case is OBC is 90, or the line from the center to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular. And the reason we use, we just say line from center to midpoint chord. So these are some of the facts that we've been learning about. Nintendo, you've got it as well. Okay, I want to give another one. What do we know if we have a center of the circle and we have a diameter, and then that diameter subtends an angle at the circumference? So let's call this, that's O. Let's call this A, this B, this C. What do we know about angle C if you're given this situation to start with? It's a diameter and it's making an angle at the circumference. Sam Simone, Jamila, Mbali, you're quite right. You know that that angle must be 90 degrees. And the reason is, uh, what is it? Uh, what is the reason? <laughs> My brain has gone blank for a second. Let's go back for a second. The reason is going to be angles in a semicircle. Okay, so let's go back to the where I was. The reason is going to be angles in a semicircle. Perfect, guys. Perfect. Okay, let us. I know this is a bit dry, but we just it's good to recap quickly. What happens if we have a situation like this where we have so we'll call that a b c d what do we know about the angles in this one i'm particularly interested in the relationship between that one and that one, and that one, and that one. Yes, angle C equals angle D, and angle A equals angle B. And the reason is angles in same segment. That's the reason. Angles in same segment, that's the shorthand reason. Okay, so these are important facts that we need to to know there's another one what happens if i have two chords but these chords are equal in um in length and they make an angle at the center oh let me go back for a second So both of these are making an angle at the center. We'll call this O, we'll call that A, B, C, D. I want to know what is the relationship between these two angles there. Uh, Convaletu, angles in the same segment. As long as you use a dot, Convaletu, on the segment, so you show it's an abbreviation. Yeah, that's fine. Equal chords, equal angles. Yes. So when you have equal chords and they make an angle at the center, they those two angles, so we'd say angle AOB is equal to angle COD. And we'd say the reason is equal chords, equal angles. Now, I haven't shown you this. But actually, the, the, this theorem also applies if the angle was made at the circumference, right? So if I had, can I use a different color here? I can't really. Um, if I had made, instead of the angle at the center, I'd made the angle at the circumference, then that would have also, that relationship holds true. Okay, so those are all the theorems about the center of the circle. It's a bit of a crash Sorry, course. Sorry, sir. Yeah. I'm just going really to run to the front. I'll be back in two minutes, okay? Okay, cool. Sure. Sorry about that. I'll be back right now. So what I have is what is it called when I have 
a quadrilateral like this, what is that called? What's the special name for a quadrilateral that has all its sides, the sides of a circle? Yes, it's called a cyclic, cyclic quad. Now we know some special stuff about a cyclic quad. The most important thing is if you have a cyclic quad, what do you know about the relationship between B and D? What is special? So if you're given a cyclic quad, what is important or special about the relationship between opposite angles or B or D? Yes, so B plus D add up to 180 degrees. We say they're a supplementary. And the reason they are is opposite angles, cyclic, cyclic. <laughs> My spelling is failing me. Cyclic quad. Okay, now one more extra one about cyclic quads. What happens when I have a cyclic quad, but instead of focusing on the interior angles, we focus on what's called an exterior angle. So I want to know what is the relationship between this one? What is the relationship between A and angle C, D, E? They are in fact, equal and we just say exterior angle cyclic quad so that's the shorthand reason and this theorem will also work if i have other exterior angles so the exterior angle is equal to the interior let's use a different symbol opposite uh, if i had an exterior angle here then we would say that this angle over here is equal to that angle over there. Okay, guys, I know I'm really pushing this, but I think it's, it's important that we start with this recapping. The last set of facts we learned about was the tangent. So if I have a circle and I have a tangent and I have a line from the center going to that tangent, let's call this uh, let's make this. Oh, so why are you doing that? I am back. Perfect. Okay. What is the relationship between a tangent and a line, the radius, what, the point of tangency and the radius? What fact am I looking about, looking for? What's the relationship or what is this? What's the fact that I need to know? Yes. So if I've got a tangent and a radius, I'm going to get a 90 degree angle that pops up over here. And so whenever we have a tangent and a point of tangency and a line to the center, we know it's a 90 degree angle. And the reason is just tan perpendicular to radius. We're almost there guys, hang in. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you a break after this. So nine, if I've got not just one tangent, but I've in fact got two tangents. So these are, we'll call this A, B, C. What do I know about A, B and B, C? So I've got A, B and B, C. What is special about A, B and B, C if I have tangents from a common point. Okay. You're right. The reason is tangents from a common point and they are equal. You're right. These tangents are equal length, which means that this triangle will be an isosceles triangle with base angles that are equal. So this is the second tangent theorem. And then the last tangent theorem deals with 
the relationship between a tangent and a chord. So let me change it to that. So here is a tangent, but not only is there a tangent, there is a chord that is coming out from that point of tangency. And that chord is making an angle on the opposite side of the circle. I'm going to call this A, B, C, D, and E. I want to know what is the relationship between A, B, D, and angle B, E, D. So what is the relationship between this and this? They are equal. Indeed, they are. And that is by the tan chord theorem. What's more, the tan chord theorem doesn't just work on that side. It also works on this side. So if I trace out this tangent and that chord, it can make an angle on this side. And so that those two blue ones are going to be equal to each other. We often call this the windsurfer theorem. Okay, guys. I've really hit you with pure facts for 20 minutes. And I think that that may be a bit, a bit much all at once. So I want everyone to stand up and I want you to, uh, stop sharing. Okay. Can everyone, let's say, can everybody see the board? Hopefully they no, can. The board, the board is still showing, sir. Okay. Stop share. There, there we, we go. go. All right. So guys, I want you to, to now, after this, we're going to do exercises around that, those facts, but we need to give our, our brain a chance to recover because I just, I talked at you for too much there. So I want you to do a quick brain break exercise. I want you to put your cameras on so we can all see each other. And then I want you to stand up and look at me. Okay. So this is what you're going to do. And trust me, even if you don't feel like doing this, I want you to do it so that you give your brain a break. Give your brain a break. So take your right hand, put it on your nose. Take your left hand, put it on your right ear. Now take your hand that's on your ear and take it to your nose and switch your hand to the other ear. See if you can switch back and forth between positions. Is that power? So I'll do it again. Start with your right hand on your nose, your left hand on your right ear. Now take your fingers that are on your ear and move them to your nose and take your hand that's on your nose and move it to your ear. Now see if you can come back. So ear to nose, nose to ear. And I want to see, can you get faster every time you do it? So this is a, a meridian crossing. It forces your brain to really focus on something other than maths. And I want to see which of you can do this well. So let's have a look at the cameras. Who is our champion meridian crosser? Shame, yeah. Lizo's nearly tangled her earphones in the process, but she's doing <laughs> really days. well. <laughs> Two days well on done. fire. Reta Bile. Let's see it. Nanjabulo is also a champ. Sarah is smashing it. Wandile, look, Wandile is going to the Olympics, really. There's no other way about it. She well, is. Clarkle is making a dance <laughs> out of it. And Tando is pretty good. Guys, guys, I think Love you've it. overtaken me. I think you've overtaken <laughs> me. Canvas is too cool. Maybe the, the dad, not the. <laughs> oh, anyway. dad's a bit old. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you were doing well. Okay, well Guys, done, everyone. I just want to say, I love that you can be silly with me. It's really important that we we can indulge our silliness, right? Um, because we're doing some pretty hardcore stuff together, but our brains sometimes need a break. And so it's important that we can also be silly. So thank you so much for kind of just bringing the silly with me. And we need it. Okay, so I threw a whole bunch of things at you which you can i can zoom out now and show you all that now 
the main goal of today is to actually start to use this in solving, um, say, a, a question, a problem from an old exam. So I have gone and I have found an old exam question. And I want us to try first to find the size of the angles. But then a second prize, I want you to also try and write the correct reasons. So I'm going to give you time. I'm going to give you five minutes now. Me and Miss Anya are just going to talk and take questions from mm -hmm. students. But you are given this diagram. And this diagram is has a circle with a center of M with 100 degrees at the center. It has two chords that are the same. I can see a chord here that's the same and one that's here that's the same. And you have to answer the following questions. Let me get rid of this. So you need to find the angle ACD, which is here. You also need to find AED, which is going to be this one up here. You need to find EDA, EDA, which is here. And then the last one. Now, I want you to try and do it by yourself first because I feel like I want you to develop the skills. The first thing I would do is I'd read the question again. I would look at the drawing very carefully and I would even say what what facts, what theorems from that huge amount of kind of just me talking, can I remember that might be useful here? If you get the answers, I'd like you to put in the chat, but I actually just want to be quieter for a little bit and I will take questions from students. So if there's an audible question, raise your hand, but over to you guys for the next four minutes and see if you can do this question. This is taken from a grade 11 exam question. Ooh. I feel like my voice is going hoarse after all that. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you guys, if you guys and girls have any questions, just raise your hand. I know sometimes um, typing in the chat takes quite a bit of time. So if it's easier just to voice your question, please, with, but uh, may I ask, just please raise your hand because this is, we've got a, over 70 students in this class at the moment. Sarah, I think you're getting close. Sarah, I think you're on the right track. Lutando, I also think you're on the right track. Yeah. David, think about angles at the center and angles at the circumference. That is the hint. There's a theorem that deals with angles at the center and angles at the circumference. And then also, um, especially for those of us that are watching tonight's lesson on either a tablet or phone or in a test, if you have a hard copy, I, when I was a student, I used to actually take my paper and I would turn it around because sometimes you couldn't see something from a certain angle <laughs> funny but then you turn the page around and then all of a sudden you can see it so if you're on a phone you can lock screen and then you can turn your phone around to see if it maybe makes sense for you or to yeah. you rather so david look at that hundred that is an angle at the center oh and it's coming from that chord what is the relationship with that one over there? It's kind of where I'm... Okay, so lots of... I see lots of answers coming in. You're right. But now what's the reason? You have to give the reason as well. What's the reason going to be? Okay, so... Okay, so for the first one, it's 50 degrees and its angle at the center is twice angle at the circumference. So that's 50. Now, the next one is AED. How would we get that? Yep. Okay. I think Intando, you're on the right track. Keep, keep swimming, keep swimming.
what what theorems or what facts do we remember that could maybe help us jump from the blue dot to the red dot? That's what I want to think about. Cool. Excuse me, guys. What is this thing? Why am I coloring in that thing in yellow? I don't think AED is 80. I think that AED is the opposite angle in a cyclic quad. So 50 is the one side of the cyclic quad. And the other side of the cyclic quad is E. The same way A and D are opposite angles in a cyclic quad. So, so A, yeah. May I jump in here? Because I also made that mistake when I quickly looked at this question. Oh, Students, go ahead. I see a lot of you said that AED is 80 degrees, and I know Sir is on that. But ask yourself, I know why you said AED is 80, and I think you know too, but ask yourself, if you said uh, e is 80 degrees, then ask yourself, right, is M on the circumference? In other words, it's the opposite angle on the circumference. In this case, it is not. No. So then so, we can't say it's ATR. Back to you, sir. No, exactly that. So the M is not on the circumference. So AEDM is not a cyclic quad. That's really what catches us. The cyclic quad that we're looking at is the one in yellow. And the 50 is on the one side. And then on this side is the 130. And so we would just say the reason is opposite angles, cyclic quad. And um, that's it, 130. So now the red one is, I should draw it in red, is 130. I need to find what the green one is. So can somebody help me get EDA? And then I want to reason as well. What's the reason I'm going to use? So... I see some people are writing the answer uh, AEDA is 25, and I agree with you. But what is the reason? I might have to use two reasons here, actually. Yeah. So the one reason you have to use is sum of angles in a triangle, because you use the fact that it adds up to 180. But you're also using the fact that you're given AE is equal to ED because that's an isosceles triangle. So angles opposite, yeah. So angles opposite equal sides is exactly the reason, is probably the more correct way of writing that. So you use those two reasons to work out that this is 25 and that's 25. Now, what's the last one we have to do? ABE. Let's have a look at that. What is ABE? First of all, where is ABE? Let's have a look. ABE is hiding up here. Okay, ABE. Now, what other, what do you think ABE is? Let's have a look. It might be hiding. What other shapes can you see there? I'll give you a little hint. I love drawing the different shapes. Look at my, it looks a bit like the Batman, doesn't it? <laughs> so what is that little yellow thing? What theorem is that? Ah, not a time though. Yes, the bow tie. Now, if you worked out one part, what is the answer going to be for ABE? You guys are right. It's going to be 25 degrees. And the reason it's going to be 25 degrees is because these are partners in the bow tie. This one over here and this one are going to be the same. And they're both 25. And what's the reason? It's going to be angles in same segment or even angles in same seg with a dot. 
Now, guys, that was a full-on exam question that were I was taking from a, a government grade 11 exam paper. So, you know, we, the level is getting decent now. Uh, and so I just want to tell you that so you can know if you're finding it hard, that's understandable. Like, are there any questions? Before I move on, I want to give a chance for questions. No, Wazi, what is your question? Uh, isn't angle E divided into two parts, A, B, E? It is divided into two parts, but we're not so worried because if we look at angle E up here, you're right. The 130 is made up of two parts, but it doesn't really affect us because we're looking at the triangle and the triangle only worries about the big angle. So I guess that will help you. A little. Does that make sense, Nawazi? Like the 25 is just like, I take 180 minus 130, I'm left with 50. That 50 must be split equally because of the equal chords. Are there any other questions? Anyone else? Okay. I am happy to take some audible questions on the mic. Just raise your hand. Otherwise, the show must go on. Uh, let us... Okay, I'm only going to do one question. Sorry, on sir. Yeah. We've got a hand from Intando and then after that from uh, Bo Glagle. Okay, Bo Glagle. Uh, well, Intando first, sorry. Intando, yeah, Intando first. first. Yeah. Intando, you need to unmute yourself now. So with the microphone is... For Here we go, now you can chat. Yeah. I, I don't get how we got 12.4. Okay, 12.4. Yeah. So, first of all, first understand where 12.4 is in this question. So, let's take a moment to get rid of everything. So, in this drawing, 12.4 is dealing with ABE. So, ABE is, is this angle over here, that big green dot. I'm going to get rid of everything else. So that is where I'm trying to get. Now, what we pointed out in the question was that there's a bow tie shape that's being kind of hidden there. And that bow tie shape, bow tie shape is here. And so in the bow tie shape, we actually know that this angle and this angle are the same. Because of the bow tie shape. Now, before that, we had figured out that this was 50. This big angle here was 130. And then because of the isosceles triangle, this and this were 25. But now because of those two 25s, the 125 actually matches with this 25 down here. I, so I've been writing a bit small there, but that's kind of what I was. I this 25 and that 25 are in the bow tie together. Okay. Rita Bile, what is your question? It was a Bochlachle had a question, sir. Bochlachle, go ahead. So we can construct ourselves to find the same angles on the same arc. We normally wouldn't use a construction here, but we can sometimes. Okay, I'm going to move on for now. I just want to, I will take the question from Bochlachle as we start here. I'm only going to do one question for this one. I want you guys to find me five, with reasons, I want you to find me five other angles equal to X. So first of all, where is X? X is hiding down here. And you need to find five other angles in the drawing that are equal to X, but you need to give reasons. However, thankfully, because of the numbering, it's very easy to write an angle here. So like, for example, B1 is simple to write because the labeling is clear. So I want you to try and find as many as you can. We're not doing 13.2. That is not relevant for us right now. We'll talk about those in the last lesson. Um, but all I'm looking at is find me other angles equal to X. And I want you to think what shapes are going to be involved. There's no center of the circle in this question. So all the facts about the center of the circle are not really involved. 
But there was something else that was important. DA and DB are tangents. So let me even just point out where those tangents are. So DA is a tangent and DB is a tangent. And so think about what facts relate to tangents. And also I'm given some parallel lines. Thank you very much. I'm also given some equal sides. Thank you very much. Could you make DAEB a circle? You could, Susanna, but I'm not going to talk about that type of question today. That's called a converse theorem or a converse fact. For today, we're avoiding the converses. We're just trying to get the, the basic shapes and these types of questions in our head. In the next lesson, I'm going to talk about the converses, which is how do you prove something's a tangent? How do you prove it's a cyclic quad, etc.? Okay, our first one that's come in is uh, B3, is A1 equals B2. Let's have, let's have a look at the shapes. I think, so there's no, at the moment, guys, there is no circle going through A, D, E, B. It's just a bow tie, but it has no circle. I want to suggest that the tan chord theorem might be very helpful in this situation. So let's just look at where the tangents are. Here is a tangent. Here is a chord. That's all I'm going to say for now. What do you remember about the tan chord theorem? So right back at the beginning, we spoke about the relationship. Now we're interested in the relationship between A1 and B1. Nolotando, I agree with you. Now, what is the reason for your A1 and B1 relationship? So using what Nolotando has said, I agree that A1 is equal to angle B1 but what's the reason? Yes. Tan chord theorem. So we've got one other angle equal to X so far. So let me label that in. So there's another X. What other angles can we find equal to X? A2. So, oh, I see alternate angles are involved as well. So let's get rid of the red for the moment. What is my reason? Somebody has suggested that A2 is also equal, or we could say maybe A2 equals X. So if it, one, we could have said, let's actually rewrite this. We said that B1 is equal to X because of the tan chord theorem. Why is A2 equal to X? So I want to say it's angles opposite equal sides. Basically, you know that this, it's given to you that this is equal to this. So these two, A2 and B1 one are base angles in an isosceles triangle. And so that's what, what that is about. So we now have two angles equal to X, but I still need to find three more. So the, the hunt is still on guys, like we're hunting for treasure here. Who else has some? So we found that, that no, we ha what haven't we used yet? I feel like we could use something else. We've got the parallel lines. What else have we got? Mm. 
E1 is equal to, I wouldn't say B2. I'll turn E1 equals B2. I don't know if I agree with that. Not yet, anyway. What about... I'm going to point something out, guys. Uh, what about this? Okay, this was a tangent, right? And this is a chord. It's a little bit sneaky. So do you all agree with me that DB is a tangent? It says here, DB is a tangent. So now the red line makes a chord there. It's a little bit more tricky. Can you see that shape? So I'll do it again now. So we have this. This is where Ms. Anya was talking about turning it on its side. Yeah, it helps you especially. That's what also, um, even if you, I know you don't really have time in these lessons, but when you yeah. have these for homework, it's also good to maybe redraw it, some a lacquer big so you can make your notes on it as well. So guys, I think that F1 has to be equal to X as well. And that's by the tan chord theorem. It's like hiding out here. It's, it's, you can't see it because it's, it's kind of written the other way around. Wait, sorry, I'm doing it the wrong, am I doing the right place? I'm doing it in the wrong place. It's not F1. Sorry, guys, having a moment. Here's my tangent. Here's my chord. It's B2. So B2 is equal to X by the tan chord theorem. Okay, now, once I've got B2 being X, now I can use my Z shape. Let's just make sure. So now I could say, uh, let's just make sure. So I've got that tangent, that chord, that's X, yes. So I've got D1 equal to X, and that's going to be alternate angles. Uh, DC parallel to, what was the other one? Uh, DC parallel to FB. So how many X's have we got? We've got four. We need one more. What's the last one? Has anybody got it yet, Ms. Anya? I think everyone's got D1 and everyone's got B2. Someone said E1 is X. Or Liswa. Okay. I don't agree. Yeah. Unfortunately, this line and that line are not parallel. Mm. So that's why E1. But I'm wondering about what is some of the stuff that we haven't used yet? So what are some Corresponding of the... maybe? Yeah. So... Let's have a look at this. If I look at this long line there and that line there. So it's almost like that F shape. Somebody said B4 equals X. I don't think B4 equals X. There's, there's two ways we could do it. The other way to do it Okay, I, I think, have you guys heard of the F shape? So back in grade nine, you'd sometimes see like the reverse F shape where you have corresponding angles. So this one over here is corresponding to that angle over there. And it's got parallel lines going through it. Look here. So what's going to be the last angle equal to X? Yeah, Marisa, corresponding, yep. So what is the angle going to be? It's going to be angle C is equal to X. And then we just say corresponding angles, DC parallel to uh, FB. 
The only other way that I could see of doing it, that was the one. The other one was what's called the external angle of a triangle theorem. Oh, Cliff, I'm making this go away. So if I go up here, what I could have said is if I have this um, thing in green, can you see that that angle there is made up of two X's? And that is the exterior angle of the triangle. And then the interior ones, that must mean that these two must be X and X to give you the two X on the outside. So you could have done that. So corresponding and parallel is the same thing? No. So, um, Koliswa, um, if two lines are parallel, they're always the same distance apart, which is like this, and I have arrows on, corresponding angles will be equal. So let's say if those corresponding angles are between the same parallel lines. And so we call that these angles in the F shape corresponding angles. Okay, so that was quite a tough one, guys. Um, I think I want to do one more tonight and then we're going to call it the day. But before I do that, are there any questions? I, that was tough. I, I mean, like, there's no doubt about it. Things are, um, yeah. So, Kuliso in the chat asks if corresponding and parallel is the same thing. Remember, Kuliso, corresponding is a type or type of or set of, or sorry, a couple of lines that are parallel. So they're not exactly the same. Corresponding is more like a type of lines that are parallel. That makes sense. So yeah. you can't be corresponding and not be parallel. So like Ntandos mentioned now, your F, your U, your N. F for corresponding, U for co-interior, and N for alternate. And those are all um, examples of how parallel lines can be used in theorems. Back to yeah. you, sir. Okay, um, I'm going to ask everyone to try and do this last question. While the question is taking place, I'm going to take more questions from you guys. But basically, I want you to try and find the size of angle O1 and try and find the size of angle O2, giving reasons. And that's going to be the last question for today. Um, but in the interim, Londiwe, I see your hand is up. Do you want to ask a question? And the rest of us were working on this to finish for the day. Uh, Wandile, O does not, O, well, O altogether is 360. Londiwe, go ahead and ask a question. You can unmute. Careful, Sarah. Remember, O1 is at the center, huh? Um, sir. I wanted to ask where 2x on the previous question we were doing. Say that again. I want I to ask questions on on the previous on the previous question oh. we we're doing where the last one where we've got uh, x yes sir. I lost you for a second again there. So I think, Lundi, what we're going to have to do, because the audio is not coming through very clearly, can you just stay on? We're going to have a little bit of time at the end, and I will I'll attend to your question. Um, so for everyone who's feeling it, if you want some additional questions, we're going to finish the lesson in about two minutes' time. But then anybody who has extra questions, you can stay on, and we will we'll go through them. So a lot of people, O1, O2. So O1 yes, sir. is equal to, it's not equal to 39. Okay, that's what I'm going to tell you. Because that is the angle at the circumference. And this O1 is the angle at the center. Now it looks like a butterfly, but the butterfly's fourth point is not on the, on the circle. So actually O1 is two times 39 or... 78 and the reason is uh, angle at uh let me get some space angle at center equals twice angle at circumference 
So this is going to be 78 degrees. Now, what I want to know is what is O2 going to be? Oh, have I made this up? No, I haven't. 39 doubled is 78. Good. What is O2 going to be? And more importantly, what is the reason that I'm going to use? See, Kamvaletu, Sarah. Uh, okay, so Sarah, you're asking, how did I get 78? I'm using, for the first question, I'm using this chord to give me 39 at the circumference, and then I'm using that same chord to get this at the center. Okay, now for O2, you're quite right, guys. O2 is equal to 78 degrees, but what is the reason? I'll give you a hint by drawing in some colors here. Yes, the reason is equal chords, equal angles. So because these two chords are equal, when they make an angle at the center, those two angles will be the same. And since we know this is 78, that must be 78. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've given you a serious lesson today. This has been some proper grafting. And so I think that now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little break um, or until Wednesday. But those students who are feeling a bit unsure and want to clarify some stuff, I'm going to ask you to put your hands up and I will take questions from whatever part of the lesson you didn't understand. Come for you, it can't be vertically opposite. That's a good question. It can't be vertically opposite because these lines aren't straight. Vertically opposite would have to have this line continuing like that. So you cannot use vertically opposite. Okay, let's see the hands raised. Uh, Ms. Anya, if you could identify who was... Yeah, yes, sir. so Londiwe, your hand is still up. I don't know, not too sure if you still have a question. Can you just let us know? Londiwe, go ahead. So you want yes, to ask... ma'am, I do previous... have a question. Let's go back it... to the previous question. Yeah. Yes, Londiwe, what do you want to ask? On the previous question, that's what we're doing. Yeah. What do you, what part of it do you want to talk about? Um, where we 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 found that c is equal to x. C is when equal to x. How do how do? Okay. Yes. On how did you construct the elf? Okay. Let's get rid of everything so far in this question because it's easy to bring back, and I just want to focus on yes. c. Okay, for a second. So if we look at these two parallel lines, do you see the two parallel lines in yellow? Yes. And now, do you see that there? So first of all, you have to believe me, you have to check for yourself that you see the relationship between this angle over here and this angle over there. Those are corresponding angles between parallel lines. And I want to say that they're equal. That's, that's the first part I need to check that you understand that. Does that, do you see the, the what we call the F shape? Yes, sir. Okay, now, earlier in the question, we worked out that this was X. We worked out that that was X. We worked out that that was X. So, the only one we really care about right now is this, uh, let me zoom in even more. This X over here, this blue X over here is corresponding, is equal to that one over there. And that's how I could say C is equal to X. And the reason was corresponding angles. Um, and then it was, I said the parallel lines were DC parallel to uh, FB. So does that help you understand the relationship? The blue relationship is the corresponding. And then the other relationship, the one in red, starts at the beginning of the question, which was tan chord theorem. 
Yes, sir. Cool. Well done. That was hard, though. Hey? That's not an easy thing. Uh, next yeah. question. Um, Paul's next. And Paul, go ahead. Um, hi, hello, sir. Hello. So I wanted um the question after this one. I wanted to ask you why um o o two is isn't equals to seventy eight degrees. Okay, it is equal to if I remember. Okay, so let's have a look. So yeah, it should be. Yeah. So, so I wanted to ask why isn't it um a vertically opposite angles? But I saw you gave the answer. Okay, oh, okay. it's a good it's a good question. So vertically opposite angles only happen when you have two straight lines meeting. The reason it's not vertically opposite is that has to go the vertically opposite angles, which is a bit weird when you think about it, but it's, it's, it's not vertically opposite. The theorem that we use is we go, first of all, we got this was 78 because it's yes. twice the angle. And then we said, because these chords are the same, they make the same angles at the center, which means that it must be 78. Yes. Cool. Okay. Nice. Question. Who else has a question? Um, yes, it's uh, uh, Anam Dwe Twa. You next, Anam Lee. Anam. Yeah. Uh, previous question, please. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's go there. Yeah. So, sir, the reason why you won't say, um, A one is equal to B three is it because there's there's no circle around uh, yeah. D, A, B, E. Yes. So you can't, at the moment, you don't know. The, the, the last lesson will tell you about this, but you need to prove that this a circle can fit through these four points. You don't know that yet. You're just seeing the bow tie. Oh, flip. Sorry, I jumped back too far. Where did I go? Um, let me just go. I'll be back in the question in a second. Um, up there yeah you don't know that that is a cyclic quad and the theorem the bow tie theorem depends on having a, a circle fit through those four points you would first need to prove that um which we haven't done in this question all right thank you sir cool next question okay it's a uh, ngomane family Sorry, so apologies, apologies. It's called Liswa first. Sorry. Koliswa, go ahead. Koliswa, you need to unmute yourself, please. Um, hi, sir. Hello. I just wanted to know do you see okay, please um bring on the next question, not this next one. Next question. Okay, let's go to the next question. Um yeah. I didn't know where the two came from when you said um two times 39, but I can see where the 39 comes from. Okay. Yeah. So this is that theorem that the angle, if you've got a chord and you make an angle at the circumference, and then you use that same chord to make an angle at the center, the one at the center is double the size of the one on the circumference. Perfect. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to have to, I think, leave it there. I see most of you guys that, that are leaving the lesson. I just want to say thank you very much. You worked really hard today. And I think for those who it was your first lesson, guys, this must have been very, very tough because we've done eight hours on this before getting here. And so I just want to encourage you, please go back and watch from the beginning. We didn't start by going this fast. This was kind of, we built up to this over a long period of time. So I don't want you to feel discouraged if you were like, oh my goodness, this is like, this is nine hours in. Taylor, you can see the recording on the Watobe website, probably the easiest, or on uh, YouTube under Watobe grade 11. Um, yeah. Th that and then, sorry, the sorry, sir, to interrupt there, but also, Taylor, no. like this lesson that's just presenting now, this one will only show by, by about Wednesday, but all the previous lessons are early in the chat. I posted the links. You can access them there on the site and, like, so I said, on YouTube. Sorry, back yeah. to you, sir. Oh, it's good. This, this is a section that you really have to build it up week by week and you build up the awareness of the shapes. And now when we started, we didn't even add reasons. We were just looking for the values and we've kind of built on top of that. 
Um, and so I think you'll see that if you look at the, the previous videos. Final Kwanda. Um, yeah, but just a huge well done to everyone. Um, I know this section, people do find it tricky. And what I would suggest is if you build up slowly, it's actually not bad. But if you try and rush it, people get stressed and then it's hard to see the pictures. So I want to encourage you to go through those videos in your own time. Um, because I think they're really, we've done a good job in this unit of building it up week by week. Okay, Mensa, I'm going to say a goodbye to you. Um, Mrs. Anya, thank you so much for your help today. Anytime. Thank you, sir. And I will see you on Wednesday and I will see all the students on Wednesday. All Cheers, right. guys.